Hi everyone, my name is Tamanna and uh, I will talk about a topic that's really interesting, hopefully to all of us. It's called the end of broadcasting. So if we end broadcasting and I'm sitting, standing here on, in a marketing event saying it's the end of broadcasting, then what do we think will start? We'll start conversations. So I'm going to talk about the end of broadcasting and the beginning of conversations. I realized the power of communities when I saw that 40% conversations in a community are linked to brands. And what is a community? It's nothing but a room full of people, like the room here, except right now it's not a community, it's more of a broadcast, because I'm broadcasting to all of you. Uh, I couldn't believe how simple and scalable this phenomena was if brands had the opportunity to tap into communities such as these online and talk to consumers about the efficacy of brands. It took me three years to get to this realization, and I did not want marketeers to take three years to understand that, which is why we built Conversite, uh, where we help brands tap into communities online, discover communities, get insights, and market into consumers that are talking to each other. But first, what is a community? Who starts it? What's What's the motivation for people to join a community organically? Let's just see a video to get into the mind of a community creator. I started the community because I was very passionate and I always loved cooking. So cooking has always been a part and parcel of my life. You know, somewhere when I got married, I did not know see of cooking. So I thought of creating my own community where I can, you know, whatever I cook, I can share with my people and, you know, they can also like by share their own recipes. I created a group in the year 2015, January. I added few of my college friends, my, you know, my close friends, my neighbors, and that's it, 20, 25 people I added. And it was like fabulous, you know, seeing that jump. Today, our group is five lakh members. Not everybody get a ticket to my community because I am very, very choosy. If members are added, you know, I have to make sure that they are genuine. The conversation basically is all around food from morning breakfast till night dinner. One of the members, we had a plate of uh, leftover rice. So a lot of people, you know, they got into that post and they commented you can make some different, different varieties of recipes like chila, pakora and all that. A couple of days back, a woman, she added more salt into the food. Now what can be the solution? So a lot of moms, you know, they came forward and they have suggested their solution there, you know, to the problem. So it is like a quick, quick fix. Basically, they come and get the solution. You heard from the admin of one such communities, but there's thousands of such communities just talking about food. Non-veg food, weight gain foods for kids, weight loss food for adults, uh, snacking, and there's 63 million members in these rooms spread across the internet. I don't know how, what would it take to get even half a million here in this room? Can I see a show of hands of how many of you are a part of any communities on Facebook, WhatsApp, food, marketing, parenting? Okay, I see some half hands, but so, so that's, that's the motivation of someone who builds a community organically. What we've now seen is communities have finally arrived online. We've all always existed in communities offline, but communities are now online. And think of the channels where communities are present, where people are talking to each other. Facebook group is the largest, with 1.8 billion people in these rooms. They've all joined organically, and again, people are talking to each other. It's not just broadcasting. There's Reddit, WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord. These are all the channels on existing social media where communities are present. We've all really witnessed this evolution of broadcasting to conversations. So it's a tectonic shift in the way we as consumers have started behaving online. So think of that day eight or 10 years back when you first created a balcony for yourself, when you started your Facebook page or Instagram handle 
or YouTube. So we've all seen that balconies is where we stepped online, where a brand or an influencer or a consumer creates the balcony and constantly consumes a lot of content from other balconies. Since consumers move to balconies, brands move to balconies. So all of the listening, inciting, paid marketing sits on these balconies. And as we all have evolved, as we all have started trusting each other digitally, we've seen an explosion of halls. And what are halls? Again, channels in which people are talking to each other and not just broadcasting. When we look at balconies and halls, just few differences. First, all balconies are created through paid marketing. So there's the concept of having a lot of followers. And we do paid marketing to garner followers. In balconies, all, uh, in halls, all of the halls are built organically. So I'm sure none of you have seen an ad to join a WhatsApp or a Facebook group. It's all organic because it's based on my pain point or interest or passion area. When we look at engagement between balconies and halls, there is a stark difference where you see the engagement in balconies is on an average 10%. What does that mean? One person on an average engages 0.1 times in a month in a balcony. So these are averages across all ban balconies. When we look at halls, one person on an average engages six times in a hall. That's 600% engagement. Content is created through individuals like you and I, and that's how influence is created in a hall. I'm gonna go past this slide quickly, but this is uh, just to show that not just organic communities, the one that you saw that Nazia has created on Chhatpat Recipes, but even brand-owned communities or Facebook groups have really high metrics. So one example here is a Sun Silk Facebook group, which has just 20,000 members, but the organic reach of the group is 2.2 million. I'll take like you know a second and let that number sink in. Because I'm sure the concept of reach being higher than member base organically did not just exist in the world of digital. But that is a phenomena that communities you know, have brought to life. And why does that happen? Because it's conversations. The admin or the creator of the community can come and do a post. And in this case, there's really nice pakoras. And then there's a bottle of Maggie uh, hot and sour ketchup. And then you see how members go crazy with their recipes and the same product. And that's posts and comments both. So it's just, that's the power of conversations. So when we saw this, like I said, it took us three years to realize that this phenomena is happening. So we knew communities need to be an integral part of the marketing and insights mix. Why? Because it's an integral part of the consumer buying journey. When I think of something today, I go to Google, and I also go to a community. And what's the third place I've started going to now in the last couple of weeks? Anyone? What's the third place now you go to when you think of something other than Google and communities? ChatGPT? <laughs> so that's, that's really from thought directly to community, which is my uh, information on demand. But to our surprise, we saw that brands have not adopted communities at all. And uh, we just didn't know why. So when we dug deeper, we found out that that's because there's just no way to. There's no listening or discovery tools that exist that help you identify the relevant rooms online that you can tap into. So we heard, uh, you know, Tata Soulful today. If today, Tata Soulful has to go and identify relevant communities or rooms where moms are talking about healthy, crunchy snacks. There is no platform. So that's one. Second, th there's no data-driven reporting which is possible. Again, there's no discovery. There's no means to market. Even if we could do that, there's no way to get the data. So that is where you know we told ourselves what if this was possible? What if there was a platform, we built a platform that would, enable, that would be like a Google for communities, help discover communities, help tap into communities for relevant engagement, and help with data-driven reporting. And we said the lay of the land would be the end of broadcasting and beginning of conversations. 
So that's how Conversite came into existence. Conversite is just an enabler. It's, it's really the change in behavior that has happened online that has given the rise of communities. We were there at the right time, saw this opportunity, and we now aggregate communities on existing social channels, really creating opportunities for brands and consumers in communities to coexist. It's a win-win. It drives massive value to the consumer because they are there talking about the brands and categories. It creates consideration, word of mouth. We now have access to 100,000 communities with 900 million members across the globe. And we work with about 150 uh, consumer brands, very large enterprise customers. Again, enabling discovery, enabling inciting and marketing into those communities. All of this access is through approved APIs and apps. So, and we're the only platform globally that enables community marketing. So, again, what is our vision? We imagine a world where consumers are telling brand stories. Because that's the only thing which is more powerful than the brand telling their story. And this, this flywheel is something that McKenzie had launched last year. Uh, I'm going to be referencing this uh, flywheel uh, through the rest of my presentation. But the first step is selecting the right communities. The second is understanding what people are talking about. Again, I'll just reference Tata Soulful example. It's easier because we all heard that presentation. First, get me to those rooms where there are moms and they are talking about kids' nutrition snacking. Second, tell me what are the biggest things they are talking about whether it's taste and crunch, but also nutrition, no meda, ragi. Third, let me place my hero product there, which is a ragi-based snacking product. And then it's not about my product. I'm not going to put a banner. Imagine if Tamana was roaming around here with a banner on Conversite. No. Let me go and fuel conversations by talking about the benefits of ragi, by talking about the taste benefits. And once that happens, I'll get some people who will try my product, they will love it, and they will become my, my feet on street online. They'll become my brand loyalist and evangelist. So that's the community flywheel, which we want to activate in the world, and we enable it. I spoke about the scale, which is 100,000 communities. Um, these are, again, these are communities that are already cohorts of specific categories. So all this categorization is done basis Talkability. Sorry, is that for me? Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to pass through it quick, two minutes. So all of this is through talkability, not just demographics. It's going directly to the horse's mouth. 100 million of those 900 million are in Bharat. Communities, again, are vernacular, spread across. This is a map of the communities that Conversite has access to. They'll help in various brand jobs, right from product launches, sampling, creating a new category, entering a new geography. And the three capabilities that we have, one is insights, second is community marketing, again referencing to that community flywheel to fuel and spark conversations and word of mouth. Uh, this is just a sample of insights where in parenting communities, I'm able to see what are my category drivers really interesting to see that there is awareness of prebiotics, vitamins, minerals, but there are 9% conversations on taste as well. So this is like, this pie chart is the mind of a mom who's thinking about nutrition and snacking. How do we measure effectiveness? First things first, talkability. So we'll see at lunch. If there was a way to measure during lunch, what is the talkability? You know, that's, that would tell me. If some of you are talking about communities, then it'll tell me that this was useful, what I just did. So first, talkability. Second, any uh, purchase intent actions, clicks, leads, sampling. And third, and most importantly, mind measures. Because through conversations, we can change behaviors. So I know we're out of time, but one case study, uh, this is for the leading hair depilation brand in India, where they did a product launch. Uh, and the biggest purpose of the product launch was to bust all the myths around that product. They tapped into communities exclusively to drive this product launch and behavior change. 
Uh, they targeted 9 million members across 400 such communities or rooms of women, uh, mums, etc. And the impact of the campaign was 50 million impressions, but impressions is not the big deal. The big deal is 1 million engagements, of which 330,000 were user-generated posts. So again, I'll, you know that for that number to sink in, 300,000 user-generated posts on such a sensitive topic like hair depilation. Like I'm not going to come and talk here, stand here and talk about hair depilation. I can only talk to people I'm close to. And these are the kind of real, legit conversations. When do I think of hair depilation? I want to do it for my teenage daughter. And that's the kind of trust that gets generated in communities. And for that product to be placed here, this drove massive behavior change. Uh, so I'm going to, I think I'm over time, right? OK. <laughs> OK. This is another example, very large brand, Dove. I'm not sure how many of you, if anyone saw the campaign they did, it even won Akans uh, for Stop the Beauty Test. All they wanted were, was women to uh, talk about or at least realize what was, at what age, you know, were they sort of made aware about beauty, that they're not beautiful, whether it's height, complexion, whatever. They did this campaign on all digital media, and one small leg was done in communities. There were 11,000 women who came out and spoke about this. And I just want to show you, look at the languages, look at the length of uh, these posts. I'm sure we've not seen such long posts on any other balcony as such, because balconies are meant to mainly consume and just you know comment good things. That's not where we come and share our heart out. So this was the impact, again, building brand salience for a very, very large brand. A uh, quick difference between influencer platforms and communities. Influencers are a step closer, the closest cousin to community, but it's still broadcasting. This is for a leading oral care brand in India, where most of, like 97% of the budgets were on influencer, 3% on communities. And as you can see, 0.2% of engagement came from influencers, 42% from communities. Even in absolute numbers, the engagement is high. But what's even more interesting is the top row shows you the kind of engagement on influencer. And the second row shows you the kind of uh, engagement in communities. Just look at the, you know, there's product shots, there's longer comments and posts asking how to even use this product, can I use it for my child, etc. So that's it. I hope this was helpful, and I hope a lot of you do a lot of conversations <laughs> at lunch.